Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to Five O'Clock Woodshop, right? So uh, this is a new channel that I've started, and if you're here, it means you're like me, and uh, you enjoy woodworking as a hobby, maybe. Uh, it's called Five O'Clock Woodshop because it's something that I can do after my nine to five, right after work, come in here and do some, uh, some projects, work on things like that. So uh, yeah, I really just started this channel to kind of share what I create, what I build, what I learn, what I mess up, all those good things with you guys as we uh, try new things, right? Um, today we're just gonna go over kind of my shop setup, working out in a small, smaller shop here, um, and then what we have coming up. So what we'll see in the next few weeks as I get started with some, some new projects that I've never done before and some stuff that I'm excited to try. So yeah, to get started, I'll just kind of show you with what I'm working with and uh, how I how I got here, right? What I started with. So as you can see behind me, I'm working out of my garage here. Uh, I've got a little storage locker right there with a good bit of stuff in it. I keep my painting things in there. I keep my compressor in there. Uh, we'll go ahead and actually just open it up so we can take a closer look at what's in there. So it's a pretty simple setup. Um, like I said, I've just got about four shelves here. I keep my clamps the clamps that I've got so far on the inside of the door. I've got a Craig jig here that I was using prior to really having a, a, I don't know, a good table saw, something I could use reliably, reliable is the word I'm looking for, uh, a pry bar. And then like I said, I got my compressor down here, a couple screws. This is kind of like my miscellaneous uh, shelf. I've got a lot of car detailing equipment here, some old Christmas lights, my uh, edge of gasoline. I'll get better at this, I promise. And then like I said, here's my paint shelf. So I've got all my spray paints, my stains, my polys some rollers, things like that, and up on the side, respirators, extra paper, buffing pads, all that good stuff. Um, and then up at the top is, is really seriously the miscellaneous shelf. I mean, I've got everything, boxes up there, an iron for edge banding, a Dremel, an extra caster, you name it, I've probably got it up there. So I just kind of hide that stuff away up there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for what I keep in here. Uh, it's pretty simple, I mounted everything to the uh, wall here and I'll tell you why I did that shortly once we get to the workbench you'll kind of understand why I did that but uh, that's all for this this uh, locker here all right and as for all this over here it's your pretty standard setup right a couple shelves with some pegboard in the back to hold my kind of essential hand, hand tools the things I go to really every day so up on the top got some crescent wrenches uh, this is my router bits box I got another router bit right here where I keep my drills my impact and my regular driver up on the middle shelf, I keep my level, a couple things of duct tape, uh, my glue, what I use the most, hammers, tape measures, a door jig really because I just don't have any other place to put it, and then on the bottom shelf here is the, the more essential things, I've got a vise, uh, all my triangles, my squares, some corner clamps, a push block for my table saw, and then right here is actually, it's super nice, um, other than my rags. It's made by Skill, it's a uh, bit set here. Hope you can see this on the camera. It's a bit set here and it's got everything for my impact driver, all kinds of different bits with different heads. Um, super nice, picked that up at Menards. I was kind of wanting to use my impact driver a little bit more instead of just the regular drill driver and Menards had what I needed. Um, over in the left corner here with the taller shelves, I've got my you know, shop trash bag, some bungee cords, some dodo soup, uh, soup. Um, some soap. Uh, some straps for anything I have in the truck. This is an old tool chest I had. I used to carry it around with me in the truck, but it's falling apart, so it just stays on the shelf now. And then here I recently just got, uh, most people will have these. If you don't, though, highly recommend. It's basically just uh, a storage compartment for all kinds of different nuts, bolts, washers, whatever you got. Um, something I do to kind of keep track of what I've got in there is I'll rip off the front of the box and you can see it here, let's see if I can get that out, there you go. I'll rip off the front of the box and just write or leave in there what type of screw it is that I've got so that I always know instead of playing the guessing game when I'm going to look for screws. So it's, it's helpful, definitely not necessary, but if you can start doing it or if you can do it if you haven't done this yet, it's uh, not a bad idea. I've got some more screws and nails and things under there. Underneath the workbench here, which is also uh, mounted to the wall and it's just a pretty standard pine edge glue sheet here. Uh, with some storage underneath, got some extra propane tanks, some gasoline, my shop back, and then some tools, which we'll get into when I kind of show you guys what I definitely recommend everybody start out with. Over to the right, I've got some chests uh, that were definitely just, you know, inherited that I filled with things. 
Uh, a lot of, lot more of my go-to tools. Got a bunch of safety glasses over here, drill bits, a uh, quick socket set, a pocket hole jig, some uh, stud finders. Keep a lot of extra screwdrivers in here. Some that I don't need is common. Keep more bits for the drivers in here. Uh, that kind of stuff. A chisel in here. I've got uh, stuff that I used to work on uh, the car with. Um, more drill bits. All my Allen keys. You know, you, you buy a piece of furniture and you get more Allen keys, right, to put it together nowadays. So all my Allen keys there. And then uh, in the bottom drawer is where I keep all my sanding equipment and some electrical stuff. So lots of sanding pads in here, some foam blocks, um, discs for my orbital sander, all those kind of things, and some putty knives. Down here, I've just got some extra scrap wood and then some uh, oil change stuff and some lighting equipment for when I want to work with that. You can't see me anymore, so I'm going to turn this. All right, over here in the uh, smaller chest of drawers here up top, I keep all my um, kind of like product manuals, information like for my table saw, my router, table, my joiner, all that big stuff, planer, all goes in here. Um, up top, I've got some blades for my sawzall, for my jigsaw, and then for my circular saw, just spare blades, things I need to change out. Got some drywall hangers in there, and then uh, all my different types of pliers, um, diagonal pliers, needle nose, joint, slip joint pliers, all those tools get stored in there. I've got some hex drivers in here. Uh, a lot of this stuff was like inherited stuff from my dad, so it's stuff that I use when I need it, but it's not like everyday uh, necessary stuff. Got more sockets in here, things like that if I need them. Some bigger ones that don't come in the standard kits. Got some uh, wrenches in here, which have come in handy lately, and a bigger breaker bar. Uh, down here, I don't really have anything. And then this is where I keep all my compressor stuff, so uh, my hose, um, all my attachments for the, the compressor everything like that so um, that's nice to have a drawer for that and then stored in here I've got some some tools that I definitely don't use hardly ever but uh, tools that I started with so there it's like a corded circular saw a corded sawzall um, just extra stuff like that for when my batteries die something like that um, and I need it I've got it but hardly ever touch them so that's kind of the back of my setup here and then I'll show you guys the workbench that I work on pretty much mainly all right so I just built this workbench this last weekend. I've really been working with that one for the past couple of uh, years, really. Um, I've been working off of some sauce, some sauce stands, if that's what they're called. I'm like losing the word right now, like I am for everything else. But uh, some sauce stands with an old MDF, uh, just like portable, I don't know, three by six sheet that I'd lay on top of them anytime I needed to, to have a, a flat surface to work on. Uh, the reason why I didn't build a workbench, and it took me years, to build one is my garage floor is sloped. So it starts at the front of the garage or the back of the garage, depending on how you want to look at it, and slopes downwards moving out of the garage, which is really nice for when I've got a lot of, you know, standing water stuff like that in here, but it makes it really unfortunate to use any sort of workbench where you need a flat and level surface. So that being said, you would think that this table is now not level, um, but that's wrong because trying to find what I was gonna, how I was gonna do this, I was gonna make a workbench for my garage here um, where I had an unlevel and a, a sloping garage floor. I came across somebody on YouTube that came up with this super nifty uh, idea and I'll show it to you uh, so that maybe if you're in the same boat, you can use it, but it's great. All right, so what I did is I picked up a couple of these uh, risers that you can get off of Amazon. They're furniture risers, but these mount on the outside. And so I just mounted them to the outside of the uh, workbench here. And then you can see I've got some casters on the side. And the casters on the side are actually really sweet because they're uh, they're locking and retracting. So the camera's going to be shaky because I'm holding it. But as you step on that pedal or that lever, it pops the caster, uh, locks it into place, and then you can roll the workbench around. But the risers... They're super simple to use. They raise about two inches all the way down to like, I don't know, a quarter of an inch is where they rest once they're all the way raised. It's all the way raised right now on this side, um, but you just put a little Allen key right up the top there and then you twist it to raise and lower the riser. All four risers are good for 660 pounds combined, so I'll never need more than that, but this workbench can hold me and all my tools that I mount on it. So uh, pretty nifty there. And then just to show you that it is level, 
come here and look at my level here. It could be a little bit better, but I just need to raise the left side up a little bit more, but it's good enough for what I use it for. So uh, yeah, definitely highly recommend those, those risers. All right, so going on with the uh, rest of the workbench setup here, I've got um, just a three quarter inch sheet of plywood, uh, maple veneer on top that I stained into a dark walnut and put a satin poly coat on. I know it's kind of silly because it's a workbench, so it's gonna get scratched up, but honestly, it looks really nice, feels really nice, so I'm happy I did it. On the inside here, I've put a couple rows of T-tracks. I've never used T-tracks before, but it kind of seems to be the new hotness um, instead of dog holes. So I went with T-tracks. I haven't gotten any accessories for them yet, but if you don't know what T-tracks are, um, essentially they're tracks that you can embed in the surface of a workspace, almost like a miter slot that you have on a table saw or any other side of the type of saw. Um, and you can slide clamps in, uh, things like that, just to hold a piece down while you're working on it. So that let's say you're sanding something with a warble sander, it's not gonna slip around on you. I've got them in line with my miter saw here so that I can put a stop and just make consistent cuts, put the you know a piece of wood against the stop, and then it'll be the same size cut every time. So that's what I've got on the top of the workbench here. On the side, I've got a 10-inch DeWalt job site saw that is portable. I've got it on a stand here that rolls. You can't really see it, the camera cuts it out but it's on there, that's pretty new, just picked that up. I was working with an old Craftsman saw before that didn't have a guard, and I really wanted a guard. This one also has a rack and pinion fence, and the other one didn't, so that one always stays square, and the guard keeps me safe. So highly recommend this. I've ripped quite a few things from it now, and obviously no issues, I think you could have guessed that. Um, moving on here, this is just the space where the saw sits so that I can keep it level. I've gotta rise it up so that it sits just above the workbench surface here so that the workbench surface acts as an outfeed table. Highly recommend an outfeed table if you're gonna be working with the table saw to rip anything larger than the actual surface area of the table saw itself. Uh, ripping a big sheet of plywood gets dangerous if you don't have something to rest it on on the outside. Uh, part of what I wanted to do when I designed this workbench was I wanted to be able to use the entirety of the workbench surface while, um, well, if I needed to, but then I wanted to be able to incorporate tools that I have that are portable, bench top planer, bench top joiner, a miter saw, things like that into the table so that it would all be mobile and I wouldn't have to constantly be lifting it on and off of the table. So I'll show you how I did that starting with my miter saw. So I got some latches here. You just unlatch them and then it swivels. A little push and locks into place and then I've got my miter saw right here. It's a 10 inch Ryobi miter saw, um, dual bevel and it's a sliding miter saw. So more than I could need. Uh, I never needed it a 12 inch. Uh, it's not true. I probably could have used a 12 inch but I make everything work with a 10 inch. Like I said, I got my T-tracks in line and it's level with the surface here. So that anytime I'm cutting wood, I just slide a whole piece of wood across and I've got some support on either end. So that's my miter saw here, and then I'll show you the rest of it. So over here right now, I'm just stored, so I've got the uh, power cord running across it. Obviously, it wouldn't be like that when it was operational. I've got a DeWalt benchtop planer. This thing is hilarious. Uh, they call it a benchtop planer, and that's true. It, it sure does sit on a bench, but it's like 80 plus pounds. I mean between 80 and 100 easily, and I'm like 5'7", and weigh almost 80 to 100 pounds. Not really, but this thing is is hefty, all right? It's hard to lift, so I definitely knew that when I was building this workbench, I wanted a place where I could put it, leave it, use it, um, use all of its functions, have plenty of space to do that, but not have to worry about it. This planer is really awesome. Uh, I went back and forth for a long time on what type of planer I wanted to buy. Um, I was between the uh, kind of Lower model, if you want to call it, the model right below this DeWalt. Um, it's about half the size. Um, it's a 12 inch, I think, instead of a 13 inch planer. Uh, watched a lot of reviews, went back and forth for about a year. Really didn't need a planer in that time. Was just knowing that I was gonna get there and, and really looked. Uh, and I decided that I wanted the DeWalt 635 here, uh, or 735, I believe, and it's the X model. Uh, it raises all the way up to six inches, uh, so you can put a six inch board through here. I mean, that'd be crazy, but you can do it. Um, and it's a 13 inch cutting surface. Why this one's really special to me is uh, I didn't want to buy the tool outright. They're super expensive, um, and they come with a three cutter head assembly or three blade cutter head assembly. Uh, and what you can do though is you can pay 
uh, about another $700 if you go direct from Bird Tools and buy a helical uh, spiral cutting head. And so I knew I wanted that. It makes these things work much more efficiently. It gives it a much cleaner cut with a lot less snipe. Um, but I mean, altogether, you're looking at $1,700 right there for the planer and the helical cutter head. And I don't have that kind of capital. So I looked for years and for months and months, almost to the point of a year for a planer. I came across one on Facebook Marketplace about three hours away from me and I drove to get it the next day. Uh, it's a six, 735X, like I said, with the helical color, cutter head already installed. He was missing a few blades, so I ordered some off, which that's another great thing. You replace the blades in here super easily. Ordered some from Bird Tools, replaced them uh, a week later. and I've been using it for about a week now and it works great. I haven't had any issues with it. So I uh, highly recommend this planer, but also highly recommend that you permanently mount it somewhere. Comes with these in-feed and out-feed uh, tables if you buy the more expensive version. Otherwise, you can just buy these separately, but it just levels that out so that it's easier. I think you need them. Uh, you need some sort of in-feed, out-feed, so I'd recommend getting that there. I've got some storage underneath for stock. Once I get it, I just threw away all my scrap today. We had too much just like rough lumber scrap. That was no good. It was like construction grade lumber and I hadn't used it, so I threw it out. Um, over here, so over here I've got my six inch wing joiner. Uh, just got this, went back and forth for a long time between do I even need a joiner? If I do get a joiner, what type of joiner should I get? An eight inch versus six inch uh, versus you know a bench top joiner like this. I don't do a whole lot of joinery uh, or surfacing in wood, so I went with a bench top joiner. Again though, I wanted something that I could mount into place to give me some more in-feed, out-feed space. Uh, this runs right in line with the top of my table here. I mean, more or less, it's supposed to be perfect, but it gets the job done to get boards through here. Um, it's worked great so far. I used it to uh, plane and join this board here, which I'll get to later um, this afternoon and didn't have any issues with it. So uh, I recommend this. It's about half the price of the eight inch joiner. And from everything I read online, it's not so much about the width. You can get around ways to getting the width uh, wider than your, your actual table itself. It's more about the in-feed, out-feed uh, size. And since I was mounting it into a bench top, I knew that I could get away with the smaller uh, version and save some money because uh, these tools are super expensive and this isn't, like I said, my day job. So uh, one thing I did want to mention though, which I really like is that you can use uh, both the joiner and the miter saw at the same time if you needed to. So uh, that, that works well, it helps, and that's that. So as you guys can see, I've really kind of expanded my wood shop, right? From what started in a back section of a small garage that I had living in uh, lower Alabama, to now I'm in a three car garage. I've still got space for two cars, three if I need it really when the weather gets bad out here in Kansas. Um, but mainly working out of the third garage and I've got uh, the bigger tools, the miter saw, the 10 inch job site saw, the planer, the joiner, the routing table, which I didn't mention, but it's behind me if you can see it, the Bosch back there. Um, but really I didn't start with all that, right? This is really all that I started with right here. I picked it up at Home Depot a couple of years ago when they were having a sale. They're having a sale right now for Memorial Day weekend. Highly recommend if you're just looking to get into wood tools, uh, woodworking and need you know, some tools for a good price. They got all your different brands, Ryobi, uh, Milwaukee, uh, DeWalt, obviously, Rigid. Ryobi and Rigid being the kind of lower end, but value tools. Uh, they're still good tools. My, my Ryobi uh, miter saw, my miter saw is a Ryobi, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I got that for $125, you know, versus buying a 10 inch, maybe three to $400 DeWalt saw. Um, so brand isn't always everything. Consider how much you're gonna use the tool. Uh, what your budget is, you know, what you can afford to spend. You don't need to break the bank to get the one big tool when you can get smaller tools for just as much money. So like I said, I picked all these up, came with a 10 inch circular saw. I do recommend a 10 inch versus an eight and a quarter inch, a sawzall, a uh, multi-tool right here, an impact driver, a regular driver, and then a flashlight, of course, uh, and a carrying case, um, all for probably $500 back in the day. And uh, these tools really got me started, got me through a lot. Uh, you can buy all kinds of things. You saw my jig back in the cabinet out there, the Craig jig, which allows you to cut down bigger stock like your plywood sheets and things like that with a table saw, I'm sorry, with a circular saw. Uh, and keeping that straight edge, you can come up with straight edge clamps, all that kind of stuff, instead of using a, a you know, a $600 table saw. So there are ways around all of that. Uh, from here, I went ahead and bought a, a DeWalt plunge router and uh, let me just pull it out. 
Before I get on to this set of tools, I forgot to tell you with that last set there, it also comes with uh, two batteries and a charging station. So really that's a lot of tools for a decent price. So again, uh, now's the time to buy them. Anytime they're on sale, they go on sale probably three to four times a year. So uh, look for those deals. Golly, sorry, your big box stores. Um, and then I kind of upgraded my woodworking right to um, different tools, different set of tools, more specialized specific tools. The other set of tools you can use for a wide variety of things. So got this jigsaw last Christmas, just helps for finer, uh, smaller cuts that a circular saw or a table saw uh, might not be able to do. The advantage to a jigsaw is it gives you a nice straight cut all the way through vertically, whereas a table saw or a circular saw is gonna kind of leave a circular edge to it. Uh, it sounds stupid because it's a circular blade, like of course, but um, until I can show you what I'm talking about, you just have to take my word for it. So I got a jigsaw. These are great. You can put all kinds of different blades in them for wood cutting blades. I just got some metal cutting blades for my T-Tracks and uh, it works super great. So that one's a cordless one. I go between cordless and non-cordless tools. If I'm gonna be using a tool a lot uh, over an extended period of time, I usually try to get it corded or if it's something that needs a lot of, a lot of power, right? Um, then I try to go corded. I've got outlets all over the garage, so it's not a big problem. I've got a 50 foot, a 25 foot, and a 10 foot extension cord. Those are your basics, kind of get you wherever you need to go. I also upgraded to an orbital sander. Uh, highly recommend an orbital sander versus a, a square base sander. Um, it just gives you a really nice finish. I love putting, uh, and I did all this because I got into furniture flipping. I still do it sometimes. But uh, it gives you a really nice finish all the way from, you know, coarse grit to getting sand, uh, stain and, and finish off of a project all the way up to your fine finishes like 400 to 600, getting it really smooth and ready for that top coat of polyurethane. So an orbital sander here is great. Got a, a decent dust collection on it that you change out every so often. And then I got two routers, right? So this is the first one I got. I recommend if you're going to get a router, you spend the $200 to get the combo uh, from DeWalt. Ryobi sells one, I know that as well. I don't think Rigid does. I'm not sure about Milwaukee, but uh, a combo router. So this is a full size router, right? It's gonna be a bigger one. You got these grips on the side. This is the plunge base right now. Currently my DeWalt 618 router is sitting in my router table and I kind of plan to leave it there. So I didn't want to take it out. I fought with it enough today getting it in there. But uh, it comes as a plunge base and then a fixed base router uh, with a half inch and a three quarter inch, or I'm sorry, a quarter inch collet uh, for each. So plunge base is really good. I use my plunge base to get these T-tracks in there. Could have used a, uh, a fixed base since I went kind of end to end, but I've used the plunge base before uh, for another one of my projects. So plunge base allows you, so if I demonstrate here that I, yep, there we go. Um, it's, there you go. <laughs> I swear I use these tools. Um, it allows you to start with the router up here. You can turn it on. The bit's gonna sit um, kind of free floating right here. It'll start going and then you put it exactly where you want it and you plunge it down into your workpiece and then you can slide it accordingly. So it allows you to start in the middle of a workpiece as opposed to the outside edge. Now with a fixed base router, you can start in the middle. I just don't like to because that bit is spinning really, really fast. I mean, so fast, I don't even know the number off the top of my head. And some people will take a fixed base router like this one here, the smaller handheld version of the DeWalt, and they kind of lean it into the piece to get it going. That's effective. Sure, I'm not sure how safe it is. I'm not recommending that you do it. I'm recommending that you spend the bucks and get a plunge base router, uh, but I've seen it done, it does work. So this is the DeWalt uh, smaller router that I use for smaller things. Um, like when I'm dressing an edge to a tabletop or I had to replace a door in my house, that's really why I got this and I had to cut out the hinge slots. And so that's just kind of too small of a cut and I need to be too detailed to use as big of a router as the 618. So I went with a, a corded uh, handheld DeWalt router as well. You can get these cordless and they work just as well. But again, if you're gonna be using something that sucks up so much power like a router and you're gonna be using it for an extended period of time, just get a corded one. Um, but you know, this one's super nice too. I uh, hardly ever use it, but it'll be the one that I use more often now, I think, now that my fixed base larger router is in the router table. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of what I upgraded to, and that's really pretty much all of my power tools that I keep in the shop at any one time, right? Um, before I had my workbench, I had a uh, extendable and, and folding miter saw stand that I would take out into the driveway to do work on. Obviously, my job site saw here is portable. That's why I got it portable so that I could take it out into the 
uh, drive away to cut wood if I needed to. Um, so I recommend portable tools like that. It works well. The miter sand would break down so I could store it away in the corner of the garage and then put my miter saw over here. But like I said, I just got tired of putting things up and on um, and having to extend out the handles every time I needed to use my miter saw. So I just wanted a, a permanent place. Um, let me put this away and get back to you. So yeah, so like I said, that's pretty much it, right? Those are all the tools I, I use, what I recommend, kind of entry level to stepping it up a little bit for your different needs, whatever you're gonna be working on. You know, with really that first set of tools and the miter saw before I had the table saw, anything like that, I built everything from uh, my baby's nursery, putting a, a wings coating on the wall. I built a fence out in my backyard, a, you know, a pretty custom wood fence. You had to assemble each panel and, and custom, custom cut each piece of wood. Um, and so it really gets you all the way. You know, if you're just working with construction lumber, rough lumber, you don't need it to be super fine, super square, then that's what I recommend, right? You can do it relatively cheap. You can get into the game for under $1,000, which obviously you don't need to go drop $1,000 at once, right? I didn't. You just slowly build up as time goes on. And as you need a new tool, you either search for a deal, whether it's a sale at a big box store or something on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, you name it, one of those websites, you can get pretty good deals. You know, that's where I got half of my tools. So that's what I recommend. Uh, and like I said, really, I started all this by just being interested in woodworking, being interested in being able to create, um, you know, <laughs> really, I guess I should say I got all into this because I didn't want to spend money. Uh, as, as silly as that sounds, you spend money on the tools, but you can really make a lot for a lot less um, than you would pay for it and you can get quality pieces of equipment, right? Or not equipment, furniture, uh, you name it. Um, and so that kind of brings me to where we are. So I, like I said, I got into flipping furniture, which I'll post some pictures of right now. Some of the past pieces that I've done uh, from dressers and nightstands, cheap finds that I found at estate sales or antique stores, refinished, gave new life, and then either sold or kept to furnish my own home once I moved to Kansas. Uh, having done that, I've realized that with the time and attention and detail that I put into these pieces, I feel like, so I'm going to test a theory here, that I put just as much time into refinishing an older piece of furniture that I would into building a piece of furniture. Now, I'm not quite there to be able to design it start to finish, um, but that's where I'm moving and what I'm going to start with you guys. So our next project, our next video will be getting into building fine furniture. And so that's why I've got this piece of walnut here. Uh, my wife and I went to a uh, mill today, a lumber yard, where they do kiln, they sell kiln dried uh, lumber. And I got a piece of pretty rough stock uh, walnut. Let me grab that so I can show it to you. So I walked around with the owner for a while, looked at his, his cuts of lumber available, and I set, <clears throat> settled on this piece of walnut that I really liked. I wanted to do walnut. I love the color. This is obviously a walnut stain on my workbench here, um, but it's a maple that I stain. And so I wanted a true piece of walnut that I could just maybe put oil over and some poly and have it look real nice. So uh, my wife went around with me and looked at the different cuts of wood, sycamore, white oak, red oak, uh, some hickory, things like that. Uh, found a walnut in the back and I've never taken a piece of rough saw lumber all the way down to uh, finished lumber, essentially, what you might buy at like a Menards, a Lowe's, a Home Depot. Um, but it's a drastically different price, right? Uh, this was probably, I don't know, anywhere from 30 to, that uh, 20 to $30 piece of wood, because um, it, it was originally probably closer to, to five, six feet, maybe, maybe even down to $15. Um, anyways, you buy it like this, obviously it's not the most perfect piece of wood. This is a piece of scrap that he gave me to see if I'd like the, the finished product, so I, I didn't even have to pay for this one. Um, but this is what it looked like, right? And it's really hard to see what this could be. And my wife had the same issue. She didn't really understand. It didn't look great. She was like, why don't you just buy this from Menard? So I took it home, used some of these new tools that I got, the joiner, the planer, uh, table saw, cut it down, and then milled this piece right here. So now this is a perfectly, perfectly square uh, piece of walnut. And I mean, you can just see the difference in the two boards. The color is still there but it's much smoother and I've not sanded this or anything. So this is just straight from the joiner and the planer. Um, but you know, I think we, we both agree that it's a really pretty piece of wood. So this is the type of wood that I'm gonna use to build my son's dresser and changing station. Now he's not here yet. We have about two weeks until he gets here. No way I'm gonna finish this thing in two weeks. It's the first time I'm building a piece of fine furniture and I've got to mill all the lumber 
and experience all of that, make my mistakes, have some successes, et cetera, et cetera, in between. Uh, but it's where we're going next. And so I want you guys to be there with me for it. So that was really the reason I got the joiner. It's the reason I got the planer. It's the reason I got the router table so I can do tongue and groove bits or cuts in the woods with those bits um, to assemble this thing. And that's kind of the tools that you need to get into the, the fine furniture game. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's a lot of talk right here. I've not done it at all. So we'll see if we actually get there. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm going. I hope you guys... Uh, enjoyed the kind of shop tour. I talk a lot. Sorry, the audio is terrible. Hopefully I'll fix that one day in the next few months to years, right? Uh, can't promise I'll do anything about it anytime soon. That stuff is expensive as well. I'm spending all this money on wood and power tools. Can't exactly afford uh, camera equipment. But uh, I'll do my best. Uh, look for any other options I can. I'm open to all suggestions. Uh, what you can recommend recording with an iPhone and a tripod and uh, yeah, we'll just go and see see what we learn together and see how it goes. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been 5 O'Clock Woodshop. Come join me uh, after 5 O'Clock working on hobby woodworking projects. Thanks, guys.